Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on how to draw white fur on white paper but more specifically how to draw white curly fur on white paper. Now at the end of this video I am going to have a top tip to avoid smudging which is guaranteed to significantly reduce the chance of any smudging occurring on a white background. This can be one of the most daunting prospects when working on white paper with pastels. So if you would like to see just how to prevent smudging on that white paper, then watch the end of this tutorial where I'm going to show you with a real time clip just how to do that. Now let's jump into the tutorial where we're working on the base layer. Now if you've seen any of my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that the base layer for me is a crucial part. This is our foundation for our details and I want to make sure that I get it accurate to that reference photo. You can see there initially that I am just blocking in where my main lights and darks are. Now the most important thing that I want to point out at this stage is I'm not going in with my darkest colour first. Notice how I'm going back in here with my pastel pencils putting in my shadows on top. The reason I like to work like this when drawing white fur is because I really don't want to run the risk of going too dark. However, I still need to make sure that I'm going dark enough in order to build up the contrast in the fur. Now this is a complex fur texture because of how subtle the layers need to be and how delicate the layering process is compared to other fur colours. So I do have the over 10 hour tutorial, it's all of real time footage, split up into four sections so that it's nice and manageable to follow along to. You get the reference photo, liner and full material list so that anybody who does want to follow along to this and practice at white fur has everything there to get started. The voiceover for this Patreon tutorial is all while I'm drawing, so every single layer, every decision, the reason why I'm using a specific pencil, why the layering process here is so important, all of that, every step is explained as I'm going. Now as you can see here, not just with this tutorial but others, when I'm working on fur of any element, I always work in small sections. This is more so the case when I'm working on a complex fur texture like curly fur. If I were to work on individual layers, this would become very overwhelming really quickly. So I wanna make sure that I never get too daunted by the process. And for me personally, I do find that working in smaller chunks achieves that. And now once I've put in more of that base foundation, it's only then do I start mapping in some of the curls. Now my biggest tip when drawing this fur texture is try to avoid drawing the curls that are sitting on the very top. They need to be left until your last layers. So I want to be working with the fur that I can see closest to the skin and then I can build up from there. This is going to be the best way of achieving as much depth within the piece as you possibly can. One of the common mistakes when drawing white fur, and I spoke about this in part two where I showed you how to draw the longer white fur of this poodle's ears, which if you are interested in those YouTube tutorials, I will link them in the description below as well. But there I did highlight that white fur is never truly white. The only way that this fur is going to look this bright is if we get our base layers in place and they are of the right value, so they do need to be dark enough. That being said, we do often have the biggest mistake that we are frightened to then go too dark in case we can't lighten it back up. But that part two of the tutorial at the end there where I show you a comparison of two drawings, you can just see what happens when you do go too dark. The white fur will look a little bit muddy and it won't have the same impact. With this though, throughout the layering process and the pencils that I am selecting, everything is about how subtle that one layer is. I have not got anything that's particularly dark here. If you look at the shadows by the left side of the mouth, that is the darkest part of this portrait. I wanna therefore always cross reference and check my values. Now what I mean by that is, I frequently zoom out of my reference photo and I take a step back from my portrait so that I can look at both things side by side. What I then do is think, right, what part of the fur is the darkest and what bit is the brightest? I then know that the area that I'm then currently working on may not need to be as bright as the fur between the eyes, for instance, or the top of this poodle's head. That was one of the more brighter parts of the reference photo. What ha can happen is when you do work in small sections, as I do prefer to work, we can have a tendency of ignoring everything else in the reference photo. So when we're working on a highlight, we have a tendency to actually make it far too bright because we're not looking at the entire image. 
So in a moment, we're gonna be going on to that one tip to guarantee reducing the smudging on any white background. But before we get to that, if the tips and techniques that I've shared so far have been useful, I would really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it makes a real difference. If you do wanna get notified of the content that I upload, hit the subscribe and the bell button. One thing that can happen when drawing curlier fur is that we have a tendency to put too much pressure on our pencil and we can create harsher lines. With this type of fur texture, I want the curls to look soft so that it does look like poodle fur. So in the Patreon tutorial, I do show you various blending techniques, but one specific blending technique using pencils alone to capture this curlier fur far easier. This looks very complex to achieve, but if you break it up into the layers that I do show in the Patreon version, it becomes far less overwhelming. And that one blending technique that I have used throughout this fur texture would make a huge difference. I have a video here on YouTube and it's my top tips for drawing realistic fur in pastels. I will pop a link to that in the description below if that's of interest. Now what I do talk about on one of those top tips is the fur length, the fur direction and the fur thickness. Now this is always important regardless of the subject that we're working on. But in a moment I'm going to zoom out of this drawing and you can see the entire image. In the corner there there is a photograph of my finished portrait. You can really see how I've adjusted the fur direction and the fur length to make the various textures on this poodle as realistic as I can. I don't want the fur texture on the head to be the same as the ears because the fur does look different. I therefore have to use my pencil in a slightly different way in order to achieve that. And again, this is something that I cover in depth in all of my Patreon tutorials because where we hold the pencil, how much pressure we apply to the pencil, the rolling action of the pencil in some cases to get desired pencil strokes, even down to how sharp that lead should be for that one texture that we're trying to draw. All of this I cover in depth because it makes a huge difference to what we're trying to achieve in our portrait. So at this stage here, I'm spending another final five or 10 minutes working on my contrast, reinforcing my shadows. What this will do is it will make the portrait far more three-dimensional because I am just reinforcing that contrast. Now I know I speak about contrast so much in all of my tutorials, but here is exactly why. These minor alterations make such a difference to the overall piece. Now the one thing that I would recommend is to always take a step back from your easel, put that artwork away for a day or two and work on it with fresh eyes because that will make a huge difference to what you notice may need tweaking and therefore improve that portrait even more. So at the beginning of this video I mentioned of a top tip to prevent smudging your work. Now this is more important when you're working on white paper because of course that's gonna be a lot more visible. Those smudge marks on that white background are gonna be very, very hard to erase. So there is one thing that we often do that we think is actually going to prevent smudging, but it can actually in some cases cause it. Now this is, comes down to glassine. Now in every single tutorial, you will see that I will have a translucent piece of paper. It looks very similar to tracing paper, but it feels a little bit thinner. And I always use that. I'm moving it all the time, resting my hand on that to make sure that my side of my hand never comes in contact with the portrait. Of course, if we lean on any part of our drawing, that's gonna make the smudging a lot worse. However, although glassine is excellent, I also use it to package up my portraits it can cause smudging. Now I have just taped a normal bit of white paper to the back of this current project that I'm working on so you can see why. If you remove your glassine paper and turn it round, can you see how dirty that surface looks? All down here. Now this is because as we keep on moving our paper, depending on the area that we're working on, we'll tape it here for instance, then go to lean back on the artwork, Every time we are leaning the side of our hand on the side of the glassine, it does pick up a fine layer of that pastel without realising it because we would normally be working up against something coloured with the portrait. We will not notice the amount of pastel that the glassine will pick up on the back of this paper here. You can see just how dirty that is and then transfer that all the way across to your background. So let's say I was working on the poodle and I kept moving my hand, drawing back and forth, then I would reposition it here. Can you even see there is a slight, I moved my light in a little bit. Can you see here, there is a line of darker pastel 
all being transferred from the pressure that I'm applying to the glassine paper. So my one biggest tip of avoiding this, I would still always recommend to use glassine 100%. But what I would do, and I do this all the time in my own projects, and again, in my Patreon tutorials, I always mention throughout the process, wipe off that glassine paper on the back. Now, what I do is I have a microfiber cloth here, and all I do is throughout the layering process, mainly when I know I'm going to move this onto another area, I will just put it onto a flat surface, take my microfiber cloth, and literally wipe it on the back and then that will completely get rid of any of that pastel transfer there you see it's now completely clean you are now going to be able to move this glassine all over that portrait without smudging anything onto your background so this is my main thing that i think will be making a real difference if you do find you're smudging your pastel work but you do absolutely know that you've always got your hand under um, over the top of a bit of glassine paper and you can't quite work out why you're still getting smudge marks on your background that may be the cause and here's a photo of my finished portrait so i really do hope the tips and techniques that i've shared throughout this video have been useful and if you are interested in all of the real-time version of this as i've said there is over 10 hours of real-time footage then i will link my patreon in the description below if you've got any art related questions, always feel free to pop them in the comments as well because I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week, but as always, thank you so much for watching.